Investing in dividend stocks can be a smart way to build wealth and reach your retirement goals much faster. Dividend stocks are stocks that pay a regular dividend to their shareholders, which are paid typically quarterly, annually, or even monthly. These dividends are a portion of the company's profits that are distributed to shareholders as a reward for holding the stock. And the great thing about dividend investing and one of the end goals is to achieve financial independence much faster than you would maybe by retirement age. And by investing into dividend stocks over the past five, six, seven years, I've actually been able to do so. Here are four simple reasons on why I think dividend investing is the premier way to get to retirement much faster. Number one is the passive income stream. So dividend stocks provide a reliable source of passive income that you can use to cover your living expenses, pay your bills, or maybe even treat yourself and buy yourself something fun. By reinvesting the dividends though, you can compound your earnings over time and increase your returns which is what I've been doing currently. As a 30 year old, I'm trying to reinvest all the dividends that I've been getting paid out, even though it is tempting at times to use some of that money to maybe book a vacation or buy something special. But the reality is, is that the longer you can keep those dividends being reinvested, the faster and faster your dividend snowball will grow. Dividend paying companies tend to be more stable and less volatile than non-dividend paying companies. Since I began investing into the stock market long, long ago, one thing is for certain, and that is that I'm not a big fan of risk. I'd much rather have stable, consistent, compounding returns over the long term rather than trying to invest in some risky assets, which is why I love dividend paying stocks and ETFs because they typically tend to be lower beta. They also typically have strong cash flow, stable earnings, and a long track record of paying dividends, which is important. And this is why this style of investing, dividend investing, makes it a good choice for investors that want to minimize risk. Number three is long-term returns. Dividend stocks have historically outperformed non-dividend paying stocks over the long term. And according to a study by Hartford Funds, dividend paying stocks have returned an average of 9.25% per year over the past 50 years, compared to just a 2.6% return for non-dividend paying stocks. And keep in mind, this is just an average. There's plenty of growth options out there that are also going to receive massive, massive compounding returns year over year, but the dividend return on average is pretty astounding. Number four is tax advantages. Qualified dividends are taxed at a lower rate than ordinary income, which can help you keep more of your investment returns. And in addition to that, dividends can be a great way to generate income in retirement without triggering capital gains. Now, when it comes to retirement, a lot of people go off of the 4% rule. But you may be asking, what is the 4% rule? The 4% rule is a retirement planning rule of thumb that dictates a retiree withdrawal of 4% of their retirement funds in their first year and to remove or to sell off that dollar amount adjusted for inflation every year after. So basically, if you have a big pile of cash during retirement, a lot of people like to use that cash and slowly, slowly deplete it in the hopes that the cash pile will last them all the way until the end. But the great thing about dividend paying stocks and ETFs is that you don't have to do that. You can get paid cash flow for owning these different ETFs and or stocks long, long into retirement without having to deplete your original investment. Now, just like we were saying earlier, not saying that this or that is a better option for retirement, but just making the point that the dividend routes can also be a very good choice. Now that we have the basics down for dividend investing and how it sort of works, it's time to explain to you guys how to supercharge your dividend payouts and a way where you can earn much, much more return every single year. So what we're gonna go through is selling cup for calls and dividend investing together and how I've done this to generate extra 10, 20, $30,000 year after year after year. I'm also going to go into the Robin of brokerage and go into TD Ameritrade in this video later on and show you exactly how to do so. So as you guys know, there are several strategies that can help you make informed decisions to increase your chances of making profits and continuing to see large returns year after year. Two strategies are selling cover calls and dividend investing. And if you learn how to put the two together, you can really see some massive returns. So first off, what is selling cover calls? Selling cover calls is a strategy used by investors to generate additional income from their stocks. In this strategy, an investor who owns a stock, let's call it ABC, sells a call option to another investor. A call option is a contract that gives the holder the right, but not the obligation to buy a stock at a specified price, known as a strike price, within a specified time period. And this is known as the expiration date. When an investor sells a call option, they receive a premium or a payment, and this premium is going to be paid by the buyer of the option. The premium is usually a percentage of the stock's current price. For example, if ABC is currently trading at $100, 
an investor might sell a call option with a strike price of $110 and receive a $5 premium per share. If the stock price remains below the strike price until expiration date, the investor keeps the premium and keeps the stock. However, if the stock price rises above the strike price, the investor must sell the stock to the option holder at the agreed upon price. In this case, the investor still makes a profit, but it's limited to the strike price plus the premium received. So on the selling side, for selling cover calls, the maximum profit that you're going to make if the share price of the stock moves up, whether the share price in theory moves up $100 or $1,000, is still going to be the price of the strike price that you agreed upon plus the premium. One of the advantages of selling cover calls is that it provides additional income for investors, especially in a market that's not very volatile. It is important to note this strategy is not without risk. If the stock price rises significantly above the strike price, the investor like we talked about would miss out on potential profits. Investors can combine the strategies of selling income for calls and dividend investing to generate additional income from their stocks. In this case, the investor who owns the stock that pays dividends can sell a call option on the stock, which provides obviously the additional income because the premium is paid to the seller. If the stock's price remains below the strike price until expiration date, the investor keeps the premium and the stock as well as any dividends that are paid out in the meantime. So a real example of what I do throughout my portfolios is if I own 100 or 1,000 shares of said stock, I'll sell cover calls and I'll even set the expiration date far, far out into the future, maybe a year or so. In that time, I'm paid the premium, of course. I set the strike price at a price that I'd be willing to sell off all my shares for, in theory. And along the way, throughout the months, throughout the quarters, I still receive the paid dividend. So next, let's hop on Robinhood right here. Some of you guys might use Robinhood, some of you guys might use TD Ameritrade or other platforms, but Robinhood is a very simple platform to trade options on. So if you want to sell a cover call, you type in whatever stock you want. In this case, we're going to use a dividend monthly paying stock, Realty Income, one of my favorites. Now you would go over here to trade O options. And now, as you can see, this is the options chain. You have the buy button, the sell button, the call button, the put button. So in this case, we are going to be selling and we are going to be selling calls. So right here are all the different expiration dates and Robinhood shows you how many days, how many trading days away they actually are. So let's say that we want to sell a realty income January 17th, 2025 cover call. That's 667 days away. The further the expiration date is away, in theory, the more premium the buyer is going to have to pay and the seller is going to receive. So right now, Realty Income is at $60.48. Let's choose the strike price one up from where the share price is. So $62.50 is your strike price. This means that you are giving the buyer the option to buy out your shares for $62.50 on or before the expiration date of January 17th, 2025. Now for that, for you giving the buyer that option, they are going to be paying you $555 of premium per 100 shares because keep in mind when you're trading options you're always dealing in lots of 100 that is one contract so let's say you had your 100 shares of realty income you already owned your 100 shares of realty income and you want to sell the cover call at 6250 with an expiration date of January 17th 2025 you click on that one you go to continue and then you would type in how many contracts you have and remember one contract is 100 shares each you would type in your limit price which is going to be somewhere between the bid and the ask just says you know same thing when you buy a stock or sell a stock and then you would click review order and then there you go at this time you would have been paid around 560 dollars because it's five dollars and 65 cents times 100 and until 2025 you are still going to be receiving the dividends paid by realty income until then now, if you average out the premium of $565, let's say, divide it by how many months from now until January 17, 2025, and then add in all the dividends you're going to be getting paid by Realty Income, which is around $26 a month, your now 5%-ish yield that Realty Income is paying currently is now going to be supercharged if you annualize out the returns from the cover call and the dividends combined. Realty income at this point is now paying probably somewhere around a 10% yield or above. Now I did promise that I would show you guys the same exact thing on TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim. So you would go to charts, type in realty income right here and then go to trade. Right here is the options chain and on the left side is the call side. So you would go ahead and scroll down, right click on whatever strike price you want. You can see the premium right here, right click, sell, single, and then go through here and do the same exact thing. If you enjoyed this video and if this video brought any sort of value to you, make sure to please drop a like on this video and subscribe for more. Thanks as always guys, and I'll see you in the next one.